The first problem I came across was that the local tyre fitter had over-tightened the locking wheel nut and the locking wheel nut tool snapped when trying to undo the nut. Luckily, I did have a locking wheel nut removal tool. Never rely on just the jack to support the car. Once I remove the wheel, I always place it under the sill to support the car in case the jack fails. Axle stands are also a must, which I will use when I need to go into the car. My advice is to use axle stands at all times. First, undo the two caliper slide pins. They have a 13mm bolt. You also need a 16mm open end spanner to stop the caliper slide pins turning when undoing the 13mm bolts. Next, you need to lever out the brake caliper and tie the caliper up, so no weight or strain is put on the brake hose. Then you can remove the old brake pads. T40 Torx bit. Remove the retaining bolt from the disc. Turn the steering so to make the bolts on the brake caliper bracket more accessible. Notice that the essential axle stand has finally made an appearance. The caliper bracket has two 17mm bolts and you will need a breaker bar as these are pretty tight. Use a breaker bar to loosen the bolt and then use a ratchet. It was a tight fit due to the rest, so out comes the wire brush. Once you have undone both bolts, you can then remove the caliper bracket and also remove the old disc. Straighten up the steering and get to work with the wire brush and make sure the wheel hub is as clean as possible. Do not skip this step or you will regret it when wobbly wheel syndrome appears. Add a thin coat of copper grease to the wheel hub. This is optional, but it'll make it easier to remove the discs in the future. Make sure the new disc is clean as they come coated in oil for protection. Use brake disc cleaner or anything suitable for oil removal. The disc should be clean, otherwise it will contaminate the new brake pads.
Now put the retaining disc torque screw back on. If using a torque wrench, the settings are 13.9 Nm or 10 foot pounds. Clean the caliber bracket, especially where the brake pad sits. This is where I came across problem number two. Seized brake pin. I had to pull back the rubber boot and spray WD-40 inside to free the rust. Then using the spanner to turn the slide pin until it starts to free. Eventually I gave up on the spanner and I grabbed my impact driver which freed it easily. sure the sliding pin is coated thinly with the recommended rubber grease. Always check if the sliding pins need re-greasing even if they aren't seized. Turn the steering wheel again to install the caliber bracket. Refit the caliper bracket with the 17mm bolts and torque the bolts to 105 Newton meters or 77 foot pounds. First, lift the bonnet and undo the brake reservoir cup. Then untie the caliper and refit loosely with one old brake pad. This is so I can gently push the piston back in, so the new pads will fit. Lever the piston with a long flat screwdriver until the piston goes back in. Try not to force it too quickly or you could damage your new disc. Make sure you do the brake reservoir cap back up straight after. Remove caliper and old brake pads so you can install new brake pads. Grease back of pads lightly and also grease the top and bottom of the pads where it sits in the caliper bracket. Make sure no grease goes on the brake pad friction surface. Place caliper and do up the two 30mm bolts. The recommended torque settings are 35 Newton meters or 26 foot pounds. Give the face of the disc where the wheel sits a light coat of copper grease. Then give the disc one last clean. Then jack the car slightly and remove the axle stand. Then refit the wheel. Wheel torque settings are 105 Newton meters or 77 foot pounds for the wheel nuts. Make sure to press your foot brake a few times before driving off. And that's it, you're done. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.